When communism collapsed a while ago, I remember thinking about God and how God in the Bible would, over history, raise up nations and bring down and humble certain nations. And I thought a morally bankrupt, atheistic social system with no democracy and no freedom, that couldn't stand. But then I wondered if the same thing needed to happen in some way, shape, or form for the other superpowers' worldview, for capitalism. Would the market economy's downside, its shadow side, the places where we fall into greed and lust and gluttony and idolatry, and all of the inequities that sometimes result from our system, would that be needing a correction as well? For the past few years, I've been thinking on and off a lot about the ever-deepening consumer quagmire that we live here in the Western world. Our capitalist economy has led to people having huge, out-of-whack debt levels. You always see the stat on the American news the last few months. The average American has $10,000 of consumer debt on their high-interest credit card. The average American, every single person in America has that kind of debt, or it averages out to that. And you see the insane pressure that and the sales pitches that come from mutual fund companies to get us 15%, 21%. I remember the ads a year ago, they'd cite you know, the one year where they made a ton of money and they'd put that in the newspaper to try to tell you this is where you need to buy your investment vehicles. Huge pressure to offer high rates of return. And the commodification of almost everything in our culture now, everything has a dollar sign on it. Everything is valued based on its economic weight and stories of corporate greed and stories of corporate crashes and the ubiquitous and all-powerful advertising word to consume, 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 consume. I saw a story uh, just before Christmas on what they call Black Friday, so after Thanksgiving when they really expect the sales numbers to come in for U.S. consumer spending for the Christmas season, and some lady gets interviewed at the end of the uh, story and, and says, yeah, well, I I'm going to do my part. I'm going to do my part, and I'm going to go out and do lots of Christmas shopping, right? And I just about vomited on the spot as though it's a patriotic duty to consume so much. And I look at that, and I think all of this focus on money and stuff and wealth is it a bit of a golden calf for us capitalists? And have we uh, supplanted the real God? And over the last couple of months, I've been thinking about what's been happening around the world in these uh, global financial markets and locally. It's affecting everybody now. The subprime global credit crisis and fiasco is now plaguing um, entire economies, and the whole system is kind of teetering right now, if you follow the story. Now, if you have no idea what that last sentence meant, I did a graphic, up with my graphic. This is, this is the problem in the world today, financially. Starting at the top, we have unscrupulous borrowers, people who get told, you deserve to have whatever you want. You've got to live the American dream. You can buy whatever you want. You should have that big house, right? So they're sold that story, and they buy into that story, only they don't have good jobs, don't have money to pay for mortgages, but they go and buy a house anyway because they want what they want. And then you have lenders, uh, mortgage lenders in the United States who did these subprime mortgages. And what they basically did is bait and switch people who had no money to buy big houses they couldn't afford, gave them a very low introductory interest rate for a couple of years, and then had it bump up at year two, three, four, and it starts off at seven, eight percent, and then goes to 12, 14, 16, and it blows people out of the water. But they wanted to make some money and sort of get in on this hot economy, and that's what they wanted, so they did that. 
they were able to sell that product to those people in those mortgages because the uh, American capitalist uh, endeavor says no regulation, no regulation, we're going to let this thing go because free and unfettered, this is an infallible system. Um, so they created a system that allowed those lenders to, s to lend that money to those unscrupulous borrowers. The unscrupulous lenders then discovered that what they had, the paper for these mortgages in their hands, was garbage. What are we going to do with this? I don't want to hold this paper. So they decided that they would then package it in ways that are so confusing and then sell it to unscrupulous investors, the next category, who have no idea what they're buying. And so they created these unscrupulous investment products because they didn't want to carry the risk on the bad mortgages that they had. And we, or if you're an investor, those who invest, then because they wanted what they wanted and wanted to get high returns on things, bought these very high return investment products which were really not worth the paper they were written on. The whole system worked as long as house values kept going up, but then all of a sudden, sudden somebody said, oh my goodness, this is all garbage. And the first domino fell. And they've been falling ever since. And now it's to a point where Thomas Homer Dixon in an editorial in the Globe and Mail last week, Saturday's paper, wrote this about the situation. The U.S. Central Bank is slashing in interest rates, accepting piles of nearly worthless securities from commercial banks as collateral for emergency loans and pumping hundreds of billions of dollars into the economy. They estimate close to 500 billion has been invested to try to mop up this problem already. A problem that began last summer in the lowest grade U.S. mortgage market, subprime, has spread around the world moved relentlessly up the quality ladder and sucked credit from the global financial system like oxygen from a flame. Over the weekend, experts talked about the risk of the financial system's wholesale collapse. These kinds of discussions are happening. Some even draw parallels between today's situation and the credit crisis that produced the Depression. This guy's a prof at uh, U of T in Toronto. And then another quote later on in the same uh, editorial. The U.S. Federal Reserve's latest efforts may stabilize markets for the time being, but there's reason to believe that the crisis, this crisis, is the product of systemic problems in the world's economy. Things are very shaky in the world's economy. And People, more than just him, lots of people talking about solvency of banks and Bear Stearns, a big U.S. bank that, whose stocks traded at $170 a share a year ago and sold for $2 a share a week and a half ago, is evidence of how shaky the banking system is. And you watch this and you read all of these stories in the Wall Street Journal and the Globe and Mail and all these business magazines and you go, what is going on? in our world. This is what we're living the fruits off of this system. And what are you saying, God? Why, are, why is this happening and is there something that we need to hear through this? Are you warning us or trying to shake us and wake us up? Or maybe you're judging us. Is this a judgment parable being spoken by the Spirit of God to global economic markets and Western nations? Is that what you're preaching here, Jesus? Jesus.